The difficulty there is, of course, that uh, you've compared the dangers of ecstasy to horse riding. Yeah. Uh, so you see, uh, uh, what you say falls down a little uh, when you talk about hard scientific evidence with a, if I may say so, crass comment like that. Hi, I'm David Nutt. I'm a psychiatrist from Imperial College London. My full title is Professor of Neuropsychopharmacology, which means I study the effects of drugs on the brain. In the 40 years I've been doing this, I think I've probably given more different classes of drugs to human beings than anyone on Earth. You know, this is the part of the issue. Here you are trying to argue the science. You're not a scientist. We've done the analysis. We've looked at it. If you do a systematic review of the harms of ecstasy, it's not as harmful as Class A drugs like crystal meth or heroin. So we recommended it moving to Class B. And we knew the government was going to be resisting that. So I tried to think of a way of explaining the comparative harms of ecstasy. And it, actually, the story came to me in my clinic because one day I saw a woman who had suffered serious brain damage from falling off a horse. And, uh, and I began to explore the harms of horse riding. And I discovered that horse riding was actually remarkably dangerous. And then I thought, well, why do people ride horses when it's dangerous? And I realized they ride horses because it's pleasurable. And some people are addicted to horse riding. So I created a fictitious drug called Equacy, Equine Addiction Syndrome. And I compared the harms of equacy with the harms of ecstasy, just to make people think. And it turns out that horse riding, particularly if you go jumping, is more dangerous than taking ecstasy. And I wrote a thought piece, kind of a bit tongue in cheek to make people think, you know, let's not worry so much about ecstasy because it's not as harmful as horse riding, but it created hysteria. And it actually showed me one thing. Politicians said, you cannot do this. You cannot compare the harms of a legal activity with an illegal one. Which, which really, for the first time, I understood where they were coming from. Because what they mean is, they don't want you to compare. Because if you do compare, it's hard to justify keeping the drugs illegal. So it made me even more certain that making a drug illegal is probably the wrong thing to do. Because people will then cease to be rational about it. Of course, it had a quite an interesting impact on my own uh, family life because at the time I was researching the harms of horse riding, both of my daughters were riding. And I started talking to them about it. And they, one of them said, yeah, I fall off all the time. And I said, I don't want you to do that. Do you know how harmful horse riding is? And they both stopped. So would you rather your daughters take ecstasy than go horse riding? My position on whether anyone should take drugs is very straightforward. I don't support drug taking, I don't encourage drug taking, but were my children to want to take drugs, I would want them to do it in a rational, sensible fashion, and I want them to know the harms, and I would dearly love them to be able to take drugs which have been tested for, for purity and concentration. But it's up to them in the end whether they want a horse ride or want to take drugs. But I want, whatever they do, I would like people to, to be fully armed, fully aware of the, of the risks, and, uh, and therefore minimize the harms that could come to them.